Let's see, I definitely can't level up, right? I don't have, like, some sort of surprise... Oops. Some surprising... Nope, I don't have crap. Oh, 13. Wow. Yeah. That is, like... Actually, yeah, I do have, like, 300,000. So how much do I need to level up? I need 340,000. Okay, let's double-check my math here. That should be 26,000... 41,000. Isn't that enough? Yeah. I hope I'm right. <laughs> if not, I could just kill a couple of dudes, basically, and that'll work out. I mean, I'm gonna... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to go closer to the max than that. Let's do almost all of them, just to make sure we're just about there. And what I need to level up is 85,000. Uh oh. I should have double checked my math. Also, this is. I went way past it. There you, oh, it's purple, right. Ah. That's not good. Definitely didn't check my math correctly. We've got 30,000 to go. We're almost there. Oh. There's 15,000. There's almost nothing, probably. I'll just use all of them. Screw it. Hey, we got it. It's fine. Everything works out in the end. We don't need to be careful about things. Just be reckless and stupid and then win. Yay. Let's see, did I ever get the helmet for the set? Just randomly? I don't think so. The red demon? No, no red demon helm. No luck there. Do I have a surprisingly powerful uh, katana? Nope. I think they stop at 150-ish, or 150-plus green numbers, like, I think that's vaguely the cap. I think that's pretty much where we're gonna be hanging out for now on. So this is where- this is where it starts making sense to be grinding stats and cra and crafting custom equipment and all that other stuff, because now I'm at the point where, uh, I'm at the point where I think you stop leveling gear and almost are done and you have diminishing returns on leveling your character so then you start like min-maxing your gear instead of leveling it. Bye bye. Oh, he almost got me. He almost got me. Oh god, it's got a gr it's got a gross blob head. Ah, I don't like it. Ooh. I have to work on the timing of, of countering that one stab thing he did. That looked like something I could work I could use off against him. He's doing it again. Oop. Fun times. What you doing? You looking at something over there? 
Hey there. Nope. Stone faced. Yeah. Can't quite get him to burn. Ow. There we go. That felt good. Uh oh. I'm messing up. Way too wrong on that one. Oh, almost paid for that one. Damn it. I cannot get him to get hit by any of the follow-up of that attack. I feel like it used to home more or something. Now it feels like it just lands in some irrelevant location. I think it's based on where I'm supposed to be standing, but it, I felt like it always hit my target with the ending part. You are very durable, you know that? Ow. Damn it. Alright, I'm doing terribly. And he's incredibly durable. Holy crap. I feel like I do no damage to him. Come on, I didn't get to stand up yet. I can't get up. Jesus. God damn, so much for the revival. That didn't work out. There we go, now he's half dead. He always just blocks that, though. Ow. Ah, even with all that wind-up, he still blocked it. Dang it. There goes the- wow, okay. There goes all my health. Yeah, I wonder if I'm expected to have been doing tons of min-maxing over a long period of time or something? Because, uh, my character? Not... tolling out the damage. He's- he's relatively tame overall. I think I'm mostly just getting impatient, is why I'm taking damage. Trying to press the fight. Yep. What? I didn't counter that? I really thought I countered that. Maybe you can't? Uh, I don't like the uncertainty of whether or not I can do something like that. I can't tell. I don't know. Okay, you can't counter that. That was definitely the right timing. I absolutely countered that. Why can't I... I mean, I'm not entirely certain. It's hard to... T it's so hard to tell. The game with the... It's not like the game... It's not like it's a turn-based turn RPG where the game will be like... You, you tried to counter it, but he was immune. Like, that kind of description never happens. So, like... like and I don't think even a wiki would try to explain which specific attacks are counterable and which ones aren't. But I think that's not counterable. Which is weird because I've countered so many attacks that look just like that one. Like, the, the little blink is usually, like, so far has almost always been a tell when fighting humanoid enemies that, oh, that you can, you can counter that one really easily. And then I do. But I'm never gonna try that again. <laughs> Ow. Ow. 
God damn it. Oh, really? Well, there goes his, yeah, all of his stuff's back. This is not a good start. I'm already down two. Oh. Oh, he was in the range that time, I thought. Aw. It still didn't apply. Yeah, he's, he seems to auto-block all of that stuff. I don't think I'm ever going to get him again with a bomb. God damn. Get out, get out, damn it. Ah, oh, I missed him completely. I thought that, I was like, I, can, I bet I can use this as an opening. Not right, not really. But of course, that's the one time he gets hit by the finisher part. Uh-oh. Whoa! That gives him super range. No. Yes! That's about it, though. No, I don't think he get. I don't know if he really can be- Yeah, you can't. You can't stagger him anymore. When he's in this mode. Might be able to get him to lose his key, though. There you go. There we go. No, uh -oh. this is how I died last time. Here it comes. No, please run out of projectiles. Nope. Please, phase change. Uh-oh, that might be bad. Those are lasting a while, aren't they? There we go. <laughs> that worked out, more or less. Nope! Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. That was the- oh, I meant to do another bomb. Whoops. Yes. That should have been a stab. My bad. Ah. Uh oh. Uh. Yep, that's what I'm worried about. Those projectiles. No. No. Shit. No! Ah. Whew. He's gonna live forever. Am I even talking during these boss fights? <laughs> uh, I can't even remember if I was saying anything during that one. I'm just trying to make the fight work.
Which mostly involves abusing the shit out of my, uh, spirit power, because... Dude lives forever, frankly. Damn it. <sighs> Get better! Get better at this fight, damn it! <laughs> ah. Damn it! Shit! What? Fuck you! <sighs> well, that was a mistake. Come on! Uh. No, 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 no! Oh, God damn it. Uh. I am returned. And I've got more gripes to do, because I am irritated by another thing now. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so I'm figuring out more of the progression stuff. So I'm level 126. I'm a little higher now. Slightly. Got th got speared up to 30. It just was like, hey, maybe if I power level up to 150, maybe I'll be in a little bit of a better shape, since that seems to be kind of the level I'm supposed to be right now. But actually, grinding is kind of a slow process, because all the guys that give you big experience halls are all not, they don't, they're not exactly cannon fodder around here, so it takes a bit of a grind, and I never really got that far. I also have the Kusanagi Tsurugi at plus three now. I'm focusing on this guy because he gives me a, an attack bonus based on my spirit, on top of also giving me an attack bonus based on heart strength and skill. So that just leads to it having a shockingly high attack value sometimes compared to other numbers, like uh, when it's like when it was, like I had a plus two in my inventory at one point, and even it, when it was at plus zero, it already had higher attack than that plus two at max familiarity because of the the attack based on the spirit. So I figured leveling this is a good idea. So the way this works for those that don't know is you have to take these green items, the divine weapons, and you have to take them to the the uh, armor smith, and you have to take a plus one and a plus one and mix them together to get a plus two, and a plus two and a plus two to mix together to get a plus three. Relatively straightforward, it's like the Diablo chipped gem situation, like, so you take the chipped gems, you put three of them in the Roger cube, and they turn into a flawed gem, and then you put three flawed, they turn into a regular gem, and then to a, I don't know, better gem, and then a perfect gem or something, I forgot, I forgot the tiers exactly. There's a weird exponential pyramid sort of progression thing. One thing that irritates me, is that if a weapon has a plus, it doesn't have a plus on it, it's useless. What you can do is if you find a plus one weapon, and you have a plus zero weapon you want to become a plus one weapon, you can mix a plus one weapon with a plus zero weapon and turn that into a plus, and turn that plus zero, zero weapon into a plus one weapon. But you can't take two plus zero weapons and mix them to make a plus one weapon. So that means farming to get better versions of weapons is actually a pain in the ass. Because uh, you can't just get a bunch of green weapons and then keep mixing them into uh, based on your total. So like, there's all these guys... Oh, weird, they're not here. Weird. Well, oh, there they are. It's like, these guys often have green weapons. I'm like, oh cool, so I'll kill these guys a lot and I'll get green weapons off them. But as far as I can tell, uh, phantoms exclusively drop plus zero weapons. And since they drop plus zero weapons, that means that you can't mix them together to get better blue green weapons. So like all the so no amount of phantom farming seems to make it possible to get better rank green weapons. So you have to do relatively like you just have to get lucky, basically. You have to like you have to go either look up so like farming missions that the community has agreed upon or you just need to basically just play the game a ton and hope that RNG gives you better weapons. That that just seems like a that seems like a missed opportunity. Like this is such a reliable thing to go to for a green weapon, so having it not be valid is frustrating. But anyway, this has 955 damage. I think it was in the 700s last time. 
It's not necessarily going to completely change the situation when I fight this dude, but at least gives me a bit of an edge on my attack values. I also have a plus two helm, so that's increasing its defenses a bit over time. Uh, just kind of mixing what I can, but much like everything else, getting anything, getting any equipment that's higher than a plus zero is not easy. So good luck. I suppose I should max out its uh, its rank with glue. There we go. Now that that's all wasted. <laughs> back to the grindstone. Of course, I had to leave the game and come back, so I replayed the entire level to get back here, but I have elixirs again. I may need to get a, get, Kodama sen <clears throat> get a Kodama Sense item and just play all the previous levels if I keep running out of elixirs, because running out is a bummer. Now back to probably not talking while I try to concentrate. <sighs> ah. Hate, by the way, that he can have his back to me and be blocking somehow. That's bullshit. What's the point of getting behind him if, you're, if he's not vulnerable to being, me being behind him? He just magically blocks and teleports facing my direction in that moment? You know what doesn't do that? Real boss fights in this game. Real boss fights in this game don't teleport like magic bullshit. It's only these stupid ones that are like, I'm an NPC phantom pretending to be a boss fight. Which is why they're so fucking irritating, because they don't have the basic rules the rest of the game follows when you're fighting bosses. You know, the, the fun ones. You tanky bastard. Jesus! Why'd that go so bad? No! Ah, uh, they do so much damage. No! Oh, crap. Oh, shit. There's so much water now.
Just melt. Just melt. You son of a bitch. No, I didn't land my hits. Yes! Fuck this boss fight forever. Ah. Hate you. Celebration looks here. Ah. いぶきやまのれいすいでなおしてくださったのはもうわしらのためにてんかをわせるひつようはないのじゃけっしてひかぬおぬしがひけと申すかこたびはそのきではなかったようだな<笑> <決して光の主な>、<笑> の重ろう伊達の天下を訳したこの二人と共に我が野望は龍のごとく駆け上っているだが重真は鬼となり小十郎は病に倒れたこのままでは天下を見せてやれぬ消えかけていた我が野望を再び目覚めさせたのだ Where's Maria? Maria, do not know. Clan, no, hold it. Oh, me, catch, she, mash, ta, ka. Is this where we find out that the white people are secretly the bad guys again every single time in this game? <laughs> Oh, we have a European character coming to Japan to save Japan from a European character, and then in the DLC, the the, the, the bad character in the end is going to be another European character. <laughs> the one behind the plot to start a war using Amrita was a woman from Spain known as Maria. But whether they hail from Spain, England, or elsewhere in the world, those who those with a thirst for warfare cannot seem to resist this nation's Amrita. There we go. All right. Spearstone Huntress. So there is another boss fight, but it has oh, it has no um, Kodama. It's probably it's pr this level is probably just a boss fight. It's probably not a level, uh, judging by the lack of Kodama, because we did already get all of them. Okay, so opinions on that boss fight I just did. <sighs> I don't like it like at all. It's a. Uh, I've I've expressed my opinion before I think, but like I, I'm really disappointed when a fight turns out to just be a human. And I, and I need to be specific here on what I mean to try to convey my thought here because it means two different things. Like in Dark Souls and Demon Souls and so on, there's tons of human enemies. But I'm cool with those ones because they're new boss fights. My distinction here when I say human enemy, when I'm talking about it is in a negative light, because I, I, 
fucking Dark Souls 2, so many people were mad about there being a lot of humanoid enemies versus other types of enemies in that game in particular, and, and made a bunch of drama about that. I didn't even realize that criticism until somebody else said it, because that just doesn't come to mind for me. I was like, sure, humanoid, whatever, that's fine. Uh, when I'm talking about when I complain about human enemies in this game, I'm talking about enemies that are basically an NPC phantom. Like those guys that you press circle on, and it's like, oh look, a guy that's basically the player character, but with an AI attacking you. It's like, that's fine for phantoms, I guess, but for boss fights? That's really disappointing. Like, they're just using the move sets that I would use if I had that weapon and stuff like that. So then it just becomes this case of fighting an enemy that's massively more powerful than you, arbitrarily. Because he's got super long health bar, and he can kill you in like two hits, or one hit. And you have to hit him like 500 times, and he can block constant. That's probably the biggest thing that, that eats away in my patience with those kinds of boss fights, is... They just spam block so hard. And there might be special tactics that I'm not super aware of that can totally destroy this blocking. But, like, it, it feels like it's just a stat check. Because... Whenever I, because I, every now and then I'll like cave and I'll be like, all right, let's look at somebody else do this fight and see if I'm missing something horribly wrong. And I see some guy that's like horribly, who's super powered, just literally stomping the boss to death. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't block all the time for you because you literally overpower his block by being super badass and crazy powerful. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> Well, for normal plebeians like me that haven't farmed level 10 gear for every slot and so on and so forth, I'm like, that's... He literally like, that doesn't happen. <laughs> like I can I can hammer away at him, but his, his, my my key even when I'm even when I'm key pulsing, my key will generally not last as long as his does. So like he's he can just keep blocking all the time. So my way of getting around that, of course, is is the uh, the spirit talisman because I can summon a fire attack that can't be blocked. They can for some reason they can't block the spirit attack, but they can block a giant explosive. I can throw a bomb behind them, and it'll cluster bomb all around them and consume them in flame, and they'll just block the whole thing, but they can't block the spirit, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if the rules, what the, how they de determine these rules for blocking. But ultimately, it, what, what the bummer for me is that it's just kind of low effort. Uh, a real new boss fight, like that crazy guy, Shigazani, with his crazy, like, millipede attacks and flips and crazy sh stuff going on, like, that was a real new boss fight designed from the ground up. That's the type of stuff I'm looking forward to at the end of a level. When I play through a level, I want to fight a cool boss. I want to fight Fume Knight. I want to fight Nameless King. I want to fight anything badass. Uh, that I want to fight the fucking White Tiger boss from this from this game, or Nue, or stuff that's designed from the ground up as a boss fight. But this level I just played had two boss fights that were both just NPC phantoms, and that's that's two boss fights out of what? If this is if this next one is the last one, that'd be two out of four. And she's human too. It might be three out of four for all I know. Maybe she's cool, maybe she's not, we don't know yet. But like he's like the lord of this entire area. He's the guy on the cover of the DLC's like image that's like the promotions and everything. Like he's supposed to be a big deal, and he's just a guy that does dual blade. Like he just does the normal dual blade uh, controls. His only gimmick is that he has two Amrita that I don't have access to, so when he... Not Amrita, a Guardian Beast. So when he goes into living weapon mode, he has one living weapon where he has extended reach on all his attacks, and one living weapon thing where he does shockwaves on his attacks. And that's it? Like, he's hard because he has super stats, and can kill you instantly, and stuff like that. But like, his moves aren't interesting, or hard, or really, like, it's mostly just the sheer damage they can do dole out. And he doesn't really have interesting patterns because he's just an AI. Like, if you're not... I know a lot of people push back against my criticism of this kind of stuff, but look at this. Look, Go back, look at the boss fights that I'm talking about that are designed from the ground up. They have tells, they have, they have patterns, they have moves they use. It's the, it's the basic syntax of how boss fights in video games work. But then compare that to, like, an NPC phantom fight, uh, which is fighting a character that, that moves like the player character does. The player character is not designed to be fought against. He is designed to be controlled by the player. He doesn't have tells. All of his attacks start almost instantly because they're supposed to feel good when you press buttons. It's supposed to be all about like, oh, I press square and he immediately attacked with square because boom, bam, zippy, zippy bayonetta combat. That's the whole point. It's not. It is a move set that is not designed to be fought against. It's designed to be played as. There's a very huge difference 
at, you'd never want to fight against the player character in most video games that are designed to single player experiences because they just don't it's not a cool experience. So every time a boss fight turns out to be pl uh, designed like the player character, it's like, oh, this is kind of miserable. And I, I scoured the internet looking for somebody that had a good strategy. Some sort of cool combat snare. Like, wow, look how he ducks and weaves through all those attacks and totally nails it. And man, the internet is chock full of people that are just hyper powerful and just steamrolling him. I saw a video where somebody killed him before he ever, where, without him ever getting to use his, uh, without ever even getting to use his, like, uh, his, his guardians. I think he used the wind one, but he never used the water one a single time because he was just dead in, like, a minute. Like, boom. And, like, that's disappointing. Because that, that tells me that this game is more about the gear and the grinding than the, than the combat encounters. But if that's the case, why doesn't it play like Diablo or any of those mindless games that are all about Skinner boxing? Because when you have Twitch reflex combat and it's all about really intense combat and like it's all about like move sets and avoiding attacks and all this other stuff, like if you may, if you design your combat that way, then it should reward your play more than it rewards your gear and more than it rewards your setup and more than it rewards your time. Because you're emphasizing the play but rewarding the time. And that's not the right message to send for that kind of thing. It just seems like a horrible misstep, and I'm really not fond of it. I know people are going to be like, you're just not playing it right, you're not good enough at this game, get good, blah, so on and so forth, but like, I don't know. I play video games for hours and hours every day, and I've played every Souls game, and I've played several other games that are supposed to be hard, and I've, like, I've done my dues, <laughs> but this is my criticism that comes from what I think is a mountain of experience, and you're welcome to disagree with it, but at least respect where I'm coming from, I suppose. Because this is... It's, it's mixed it's mixed messages. They're... This loot grinding method and this action RPG method, you're emphasizing two different things that don't necessarily complement each other, and oftentimes asking the player to do one of those things while rewarding them for doing the other thing, and it, it's iffy as shit. Alright, let's do Stone Spirit Stone Huntress, and... Easy or hard, let's just beg that it's a real boss fight that was actually made from the ground up with unique moves and tells and everything like that. Like, like Okatsu, that was a real boss fight. Or uh, was that her name, Okatsu? The Shinobi. There is word that a woman who goes by the name of Maria is headed for one of the storehouses in Aoba Castle. No doubt because the spirit stone from Tono is contained within. As for the yokai of Tono, there... They were known to be peaceful and lived harmoniously with humans. There is no doubt in my mind that we have this woman to thank for infuriating them. We do not even know her true name. Her plans to remain a mystery. Her plans remain a mystery. Uh, we had better make haste to that storehouse. Please be a real fight. 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 Be a real fight. Uh, has no main tower. Okay, so that's the same description as before. Because we're still in Aoba Castle. Did all of these missions happen in Aoba Castle? No, the first one was way off in the distance on the map. Howdy. Is this a familiar chunk of map? Oh yeah, that's where the boss fight just took place. That's neat. Look at that. Continuity. Continuity of physical environment is a neat, is a neat detail to have. He gave me 280,000 Amrita. Uh, that's, that's ignorable. I'm fine with just dying and losing it all. It's just, it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> Alright, so if I die, I'll just ab abandon my Amrita. Looks like Spain is following in England's footsteps. No sabéis arrebatado nuestra edad de oro. Don't pretend we're the same. Yeah, more languages. Uh oh, whoa, whoa! Look at you. Woo, woo! Look at you. You crazy ass- Whoa! <laughs> okay, she's going for a trip. Wow, okay. Doesn't take some time to get used to. Oh. 
Okay. I'm trying to test whether or not you, she's parryable. I'm not off to a good start. <laughs> so I think she is a real boss fight. Oh, I forgot to. D damn it! I need to do that too, because these boss, these some of these bosses are so are so fast that I desperately need to be. Uh... Oh, I was in the wrong stance. Damn it! What? Okay, that timing felt right. What are you doing? Hi. Holy shit, she's fast. <laughs> oh boy. She's really fast. Oh. Let's not get distracted by this at the beginning of the fight. So get used to me doing this over and over again. Goodbye, 300,000 Amrita. You're a fraction of a level. Despite your huge number. What? I don't think I can. I don't- yeah, I don't think I can parry. Yeah, I don't think you can parry. No, the timing's off. Timing, where'd it go? No. Yeah. 
There we go. She's not so bad. Yeah. See what happens when a carrot when a fucking fight has tells and patterns and isn't just a lazy fucking copy paste of a phantom. I can learn the goddamn fight because they act like a boss. And I'm like, I got this shit. She's down. Boom. Matt, way less of a headache. I thought she was supposed to be the hard one. Huh. Maybe I'm the only person on the entire planet who specifically has trouble with AI phantoms and stuff like that. Because I had the same problem in Dark Souls. Like, the, the carp, the, the, all those enemies that are just, uh, summoned phantoms of copies of the player. Like, I always had trouble with those, too. So I guess maybe that's my hang-up, but I want real boss fights. And hey, look, I learned it. Yay, that was more fun, too, in every conceivable way than the previous fight was. War is coming, and it's going to be fierce. I never thought I would meet another who could see demons, let alone defeat them. Now that I have seen you fight, Anjin, I can attest that the rumors of your magnificent strength are true. Lord Hanzo, if a spirit stone war should indeed arise, should we not ally with the Kurohabaki and Lord Ieyasu? We know a thing or two about spirit stones ourselves, you know. I did it. I beat it. Die. <laughs> I beat the DLC's mis story missions. Hooray! <laughs> and lo and behold, that other the last fight's more fun because it was a real boss fight. I want more like Shiga Zahara, Shiga Shama shit. I don't remember his name anymore. Centipede Man and Maria, and less of those two idiots that were in this level. The most unfun level. The, the one I had Dragon Castle. Both those boss fights were garbage. None of those. <laughs> There's gonna be, what, two more DLCs? I don't want to see any more of those. <laughs> I want to see only the ones that are actually, like, built up boss fights from scratch, because I don't... I just don't need that in my life, man. Why is it the... Why is it that the female characters get their own moves? Huh. Like, there's tons of male characters that are like, I'm a generic samurai man that's just a copy of you, but with some special moves. But Okatsu and Marie are like, nope, I got straight up original movesets from scratch take that. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'll take that. More of that, please. So I'm tired of repetition, so as I'm trying to avoid the side missions that are just the same crap again, and lo and behold, I checked. Become Thy Enemy is you replaying the same castle we just played, and guess what? At the end, you fight on Ryoki again. <laughs> again! Oh, no! See you guys next time. The One-Eyed Dragon. Date Masamune was known as the One-Eyed Dragon on account of his peerless wisdom and courage despite missing an eye. Re refusing to submit to the Toyotomi and Tokugawa, he used his fierce sense of ambition to dominate the land with a dragon-like ferocity. To see his eye was to know either great war or great defeat. The young warrior from Oshu, Katakira Shigenaga, son of the proud strategist Lord Katakira Kagetsuna, though... Still young and naive, Shige, uh, Shigenaga's innocence and vigor made him a brave young warrior. No doubt he will someday become a supporting pillar of the Date family, and a leader like his father. Born Exchange. The Date family, family developed strong trade links with the faraway land known as Spain. 
from those from which visitors uh, would arrive. They say a beautiful lady with golden hair was a guest at Aoba Castle and was even introduced to the Date retainers, such as Hasekira Sunenaga, during her time there. Warring evil spirits. Date's local yokai were once human. They discarded their humanity through the power of spirit stones and became his vassals. Though shedding one's human skin means shedding one's humanity, their loyalty remains unwavering. Descending into yokai and losing their mother tongue would never sway them into threatening their master. 